I'm going to talk today on patients that present with movement disorders from the perspective of how I treat them as a dentist. I am making no claims to making cures for these various diseases, but we can help them from a dental perspective very greatly by ameliorating or eliminating their symptoms. This is a 17-year-old high school track star that was in a motor vehicle accident in January 28th. She was rear-ended uh, one evening. You will notice as the tape goes on that she has been to 33 other health care providers, including some of the most prestigious universities and hospitals in the Washington metropolitan area. She has been confined to a wheelchair and told that she would remain therein for the rest of her life. Notice the time. It is 2.37 on June 20th. We are inserting a mandibular orthotic for which we took the impressions of her lower jaw approximately three days previous to today. That was the first time we had seen her. We put this appliance in on June 20th. I measure her mouth opening and she can open approximately 20 millimeters. This was the one diagnostic feature that most previous healthcare professionals missed. Prior to inserting the appliance, I frequently do some osteopathic adjustments on the upper jaw to give the patient a running start in the response to their treatment. This is particularly true for post-orthodontic patients who have had constrictive type mechanics applied to their maxilla. By this I mean wearing a headgear, extractions, etc. This is a, an adjustment that loosens up all the facial bones if any of them are stuck or locked. We do that movement about 10 times. Okay, I have inserted her lower appliance and now I am in the process of adjusting it. I'm showing the patient here how much it strengthens her upper arm to convince her to wear the appliance all the time. 
It is an attempt to show her that the appliance will benefit her by increasing her upper body strength. Okay, let's see you get up uh, and, and get your, your wheelchair. Leave it there. I want to see if you can get to it. Notice the time now. One hour has elapsed since the patient arrived at the office. This is the first time she has walked or taken many steps in many months. Notice when she gets up, she does not use the left hand or arm. She has lost the use of it. I know, I think we will. I think we will. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, wow. You just don't know what you So, thank you so much. That's what we do every day. Okay. The patient returns four days later without her wheelchair. I instruct her to walk around the office while we are working on other patients. Notice she still does not use the left arm. We are going to insert her upper appliance today. This is it. It is a appliance made of stainless steel and gold called an alternative light force appliance. I'm in, I am inserting it in the mouth to fit it and in a few minutes after I adjust it I will bond it in place. This is the patient with the appliance fitted. Notice she's walking much better. We adjust it a little further. And each time we adjust it, she walks more freely. I am now adjusting the lower appliance to the upper so that they both fit in harmony with each other. I'm using carbon paper to detect any high spots on the lower appliance that putting in the upper appliance may have caused. And I just use a drill to rebalance the appliance so that it hits simultaneously in time and in pressure on both the left and the right sides. I usually do this two or three times.
Here I am just showing the patient the improvement in her upper body strength. Notice she's starting to swing her left arm. The appliance is being bonded into place now. And her lower appliance is being readjusted. Notice the movement of her left arm. Actually, the movement returned within the hour of that appointment. But this is her on her three-week return visit. How are you doing? 